All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Sean Ritter. I want to thank you, everybody, for attending our different type of presentation that we're going to, to do today. Typically, we've been doing kind of just round robin panel sessions, but today we're going to have a couple of panelists or speakers kind of dig in a little bit deeper on a specific detail. So I know you can see the attendees are coming in right now, but I'm going to sort of maintain our schedule. And uh, just to confirm, Jill, you can hear me okay, correct? I can. Perfect. So uh, Kelly Kugler, who will be, she's reconnecting on her, her Zoom uh, in just a minute. Full disclosure to everybody, I am, this is only my fourth or fifth time dealing and administering Zoom webinar uh, session. So please bear with me if I make any mistakes. I'm starting to get the hang of it. All right. So for today, our topic is first aid resources to share with your rejected candidates. Uh, we're going to have Kelly Kugler out of our Los Angeles area with Alora Collective, and then also Jill De Silva. Am I saying that right? Jill? Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Also out of Los Angeles with Digital Karma, and there is Kegley or Kelly. We see you there, crystal clear. Hi all. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, we got you. Perfect. So I was just introducing the two of you and what you're going to be covering today. I do want to quick mention that uh, Kelly brought up this topic a while ago, and I think it's a very great timing for it. It's not only just rejected candidates in general, but given what everybody in the country is going through, uh, there's a lot more rejected candidates than we have right now. So I think it's, it's perfect timing to go over some resources, not only to give out to candidates, but for recruiters who might be kind of victims of this job situation tools for you also to use. So with that said, I am gonna turn it over to Kelly and Jill. Kelly or Jill, do you wanna, you got it? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to switch it because it's taken over my entire screen. <laughs> oh, here, I will stop uh, share screen. Yes. There we go. There we go. Told you I'm learning. <laughs> Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Jill and I uh, have known each other for years. Uh, we met when we were both actually teaching at General Assembly. Uh, I built the first jobs program, and she's been instructing and building new designers uh, and working in the space of UX uh, for all this time uh, as a leader around the globe. So we're really excited to be here with you. Uh, like Sean said, when thinking about what's going on right now, uncertainty, things we've all been through before, like the last recession, I think what always helps, or we think what always helps, is to inject some positive things that you can share. So what we've done is organize them in a way where we feel it'll be easier for you to have more things you can share that are on the good side of this entire experience. Um, we come from the experience of a hiring manager and as well uh, as working in global recruitment. Uh, so we're looking forward to your questions. We invite you to ask questions as we go along. We would love for this to be as interactive as possible. Uh, sometimes questions can be kind of general, uh, but if you have a, a specific situation, we'd love to address it, uh, and we can go through uh, the topics of the shared doc that we prepare, prepared for you uh, shortly. Uh, Jill, do you want to say a few words before we uh, kind of get into a couple questions and review the doc? Yeah, um, thanks for the intro, everyone. Um, really happy to be here. I think this is an interesting time uh, where a lot of people are also changing careers and switching into different careers so that they can work remotely. Um, and so as Kelly said, I speak and teach globally about UX design and I've been a hiring manager um, through my agency. I hire a lot and I mentor people in their job search as well. So um, again, really great to speak with you guys. And um, I see a question coming in. How'd you get that background? <laughs> Important questions, um, Google. <laughs> Google and Zoom preferences. Um, but yeah, I really, uh, I'm really excited to share these resources with you all today. I think that this is an interesting and unprecedented time. And, you know, as Kelly mentioned, I would love to hear questions from you, maybe hear some uh, challenges that you're having right now with uh, working with candidates who have been rejected or who are now looking for a new search. And, um, you know, the list that Kelly and I curated, we're hoping that you'll also contribute to this list and continue to share it around. And, um, you know, there's a lot of information out there right now, and there's a lot of resources and, and different spreadsheets and lists. And, you know, like Kelly said, we want to create something that's actionable and positive. So, um, 
know, I see that we have 35 people here. I think that's including us, but uh, you know, would love to hear from the, the people attending this webinar right now. What are, what's one of your biggest challenges that you're facing right now? And I'll leave it, I'll kind of pause a second so you can have time to chat, uh, to type into the chat. And just to let everybody know, we're, we're recording this session. So then we'll post it up on LinkedIn. I'll send the link out to all the attendees and, and, and whatnot. Uh, so if anybody wants to add comments going forward, and then also a link to your, your document too, to your point, Jill. Thank you. And then Heather, you mentioned a hiring freeze. Can you be more specific? Um, just hiring freeze in general for all companies and things like that? Or do you work with a specific company that's doing a hiring freeze? Mm -hmm. And then... I, sorry, Jill, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, I think hiring freeze, I agree with Jill, it could go in different directions. Uh, and in terms of the questions, the more specific is, is better for us, right? So in terms of hiring freeze, are you struggling in, in, in the way of repeating to people constantly all day, every day that there's a hiring freeze and you just don't have any good news to share? What else are you supposed to say? You know, what are you supposed to say to people when you don't know when it's going to come up and, you know, how do you kind of move through that? So if you're talking about the communication part of it, uh, maybe you're... Uh, asking how can you, you know, ask the people around you or your team, when do you plan on hiring again? So give us a little bit more, I think, and we can answer it better. Um, I see more, I have junior recruiters who have less experience delivering engaging messages. Okay, so that's the situation. Um, this might be a good time, especially if you're doing interviews online where you invite them to join and they shadow you and they see you deliver engaging messages, whether it's uh, verbal, or maybe if it's written, you share something you wrote with them, you know, with other candidates and kind of use what you do as curriculum for others. Um, there's two more. Jill, do you see one that you want to grab? I feel like yeah. that's such a good list. <laughs> Um, don't always have the time to provide detailed resources to each candidate rejected after an interview, you know, from having been on both yeah. sides of um, looking for a job and then also hiring for jobs as hiring managers. Um, it's often hard to give detailed feedback. Uh, as to why someone has been rejected, um, you know, that, that, can, that can take hours. I, I wonder if, you know, I, I know from the receiving end of working with a recruiter, even just one thing, one thing that I could have done better or one piece of feedback or, or something, you know, and I don't know if that happens, you know, if you get that from the client or if that happens just from even your own engagement with, with the candidate. Um, but even one little piece, almost like a rubric. I don't know, you know, I don't want to get into mm -hmm. how do you change the recruitment process and, and, you know, is there, is there like a two question checklist after each candidate and then you can share that with them. Um, you know, I think that that's, uh, that's important. And then uh, resources to each candidate rejected after an interview. I think something like the list that Kelly and I have created, just a link, a shared link. You know, um, and uh, I don't know if you use Gmail or not, but they have templates that you can pre-populate in your email. And so mm -hmm. I have a couple of canned responses for, for things because yeah. when I get the same questions over and over again and I need to share out those resources again, I just put in their name and hit canned response and send, um, type in their name in the beginning, yeah. basically. And I agree on a few of those points, actually. I use canned responses also. I mean, I still call them signatures, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and I still do them in Mac now, but for each scenario, you know, because sometimes the things you notice you repeat, uh, you can you can just automate it and make it easier on yourself. I do agree with the resources thing. That's why we put this sheet together. And I think that also uh, brings about intro requests, which was a point that was listed on the website that we plan to get to. Uh, mm -hmm. But why not jump in now, I say. I think uh, when a candidate is rejected, I like ending the conversation in a similar way to how we coach people on answering the question of what are your, what are your strengths or what are your weaknesses, right? If you have to talk about something negative, which is a weakness, you always end the statement with a strength or how it's a strength. So when you're giving a candidate a rejection news, even if you don't have feedback of why they didn't get the job, you can say, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to get feedback. But what I can do for you is my network is yours. If we're not connected already on LinkedIn, let's connect. And when you go look at any company or person, if you see that I'm connected, I'm happy to make an introduction for you. That's how I can help you. I also set expectations with folks. I offer to send an email or I'll do it very quickly on the phone and say, when you want an intro request, send me a one-liner on LinkedIn. If I have a strong relationship, great. 
what I ask of you is that you send me a mini cover letter of blurb of why you're a fit for the company, why you resonate with their mission, why you want to be on the team, right? A couple of sentences of that. So I have something of quality to pass on to the person I'm asking for the intro. That does two things. That protects you in the idea of we don't want to just one-off intro requests everywhere because we rely on our reputation and our network. We want to keep the quality. So that gives you a lens to kind of proof what you're sending out before you do. You could add to it. If it's a candidate that's not good about talking about themselves, you could probably add two sentences in 20 seconds and make it sound much better and push it out. So it makes them more accountable. It gives them a way to look for them. And it also gives you some padding so that people don't go on LinkedIn and just spend 20 minutes saying one-liners, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It should be more organized and more of an even process. And it also keeps them engaged. They know you have a huge network, right? You're a hiring manager, you're a recruiter. It gives them another tool to learn LinkedIn better and to kind of really learn that job search is networking. It's not just finding a job. Every one of those intros is the ones that count. So, sorry. It goes into those kind of life lessons that I think, I know Jill does too, this is why we do events together. We want to teach people how to improve their own candidate experience. And when you do that, even if someone doesn't get the job, when you give them something they can use again and again, you really have done something well. They'll thank you for it later. Hey, hey, Kelly, <laughs> Kelly, can I ask you a, a question on that? Uh, so yeah, sure. Like I've, I've sort of done that in the past where it's like you have your own little um, tight little network of fellow recruiters in your location and you recruit for the same role. And it's not a large one. It's usually, I'd say, less than five people. Uh, yeah. Do you ever, like, name, like, to the candidate, hey, Sally, I'm sorry you didn't get the position. I thought you were great. I do know Joe at this company, Susie at this company, and Rick over here at this company. I'd like to forward your information on. Were you almost, like, tell them who you'd like to send them to? And then the response from that versus, or in addition to, hey, check out my LinkedIn and see anybody you know, where it's like, hey, I know this yeah. is a good match for this person because I know the recruiter yeah. at this company. Ever like name great, drop? Great question. Yeah, brilliant question. I think whether we're in recruitment, whether we are design educators, whatever we're doing, we're all in this world where we build our network constantly one step at a time, right? We all want to get to a place where if someone needs help, we can think of the resource immediately like a matchmaker and be like, you need to talk to them. It takes years of doing that. Do I do that sometimes? Absolutely. I've seen Jill do it. We've done it at events together where uh, I, I met with someone actually a month ago, an old student of mine, and I was like, you'd be a great fit at Honey, and I know an engineer there. I'm going to send you in. You're going to be great. He got an offer last week. Sometimes that happens. I think that over our careers, the best answer I could give to your question is if you trust yourself that you have taste and there's a chance that it could work, do it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. At the same time, if I'm in the moment, right, I'm on the call and I say, oh, I just thought of a gin over at Honey, I should introduce you. Let me ping him and make sure he's okay with it first. And in the meantime, since this is a role you're gonna go after and look for in other places, work on that mini intro request cover letter for me and send it over. Because even if we don't use it with him, we can use it with someone else. So you kind of play it. You also, I also treat the people I intro people to with the same respect as I would references. I will ping them first and say, do you prefer email or do you prefer uh, LinkedIn? Or if you're too busy, let me know. There's always a line at the bottom of all my requests where I would say, if you're too busy, let me know if it's not a good time. Um, but I genuinely appreciate when my brain can think of someone and I know a candidate is good and I'm like, oh, you should definitely talk to them. It's the best feeling. I think yeah. it just is. It's kind of what we work really hard to be able to do. At least I, I did. <laughs> I feel like recruiters want that. You know, we spend most of our time saying no until we find a fit. All recruiters, I, in my opinion, or at least most of us, we really wish we could spend our time going, you're the match, that's it. You're the match, that's it. We just want to fill it, you know? Yeah, you kind of answered my, my follow-up question was, do you reach out to the person you're referring yeah. them to first before you do it? Because yeah. Yeah, that, that's yeah. like crucial so, to me. Otherwise, you're going to lose your network. Yeah, and it depends on the person. If it's someone I haven't spoken to in years, absolutely I'm going to ping them. Uh, Jin, who I just mentioned, I've sent him two or three referrals in the last two months. We're good. Yeah. So 
I think you use your own judgment within your own network. I mean, Jill, as a hiring manager, you must get plenty of designers uh, that may have questions. How do you manage communications, you know, amongst your network? You know, you might have someone that's only hiring one designer. How do you, right. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's interesting because I, I get both sides, people looking for work and people looking to hire. And because that's not my full-time role, um, I try to be as quick about it as possible. So I do exactly what you said, Kelly. I, um, if I don't, you know, LinkedIn, I have a lot of close connections, but I also have kind of people I'm connected to, but don't know that well. So I'll reach out to them first and see if they want the intro. I always try to leverage my network. Um, and, you know, for the people that are looking for work, that's a little bit harder, but I say, okay, I'm keeping you in mind now when someone reaches out to me and they're looking for someone, but I do the thing that you said, look at my network. We're first connections now on LinkedIn. Is there anybody that you would like to have an introduction to? Cause I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, so that's what I try to do. People that are hiring, again, because I'm not a recruiter, uh, depending on how close we are, I'll create a, kind of a job description in a Google form. And I'll say, here's, all, here's my network. Here's all the people that are interested. You can go now vet that network and see if there's anybody that you want to interview and hire. So, and it's Could you have just been my hiring manager for a good <laughs> 10 years? please and sent me that form. I bet yeah. every recruiter on this call is just smiling with joy. And <laughs> it's so, it's so easy. It's such a simple form. Maybe I'll add that to our shared resource list because I think even so That's people, great idea. people that are looking for work, they, they need to know that they're actually doing everything they can to be looking for that work. Yeah. So if whatever that is, they'll follow every step possible um, to try to find that job. And so this simple form of like, okay, here's this open resource. And, um, I, you know, it's very fast to fill out. It takes less than five minutes for, um, applicants to yeah. fill out. And then I have the spreadsheet that I don't really have to manage. And I can just hand it off to this person who's looking, um, because my, God, my design network is global. And, um, you know, it's, again, I don't have the time to kind of mentor and, and watch everyone. And I think someone else had said the same thing. I think, Catherine, you had mentioned that the biggest challenge is so many applicants for one position. You can't provide feedback to everyone, um, but she yeah. does provide feedback to the people that um, were interviewed. And I think that's fantastic. Again, talking yeah. to designers who have been looking for, for roles, even if they've interviewed and then they get dropped cold, like that's just heartbreaking to them because they don't, they want to be better. They want to do better. So yeah. I think there's always, you know, time, you know, not enough time yeah. to do all the things. Um, I did see another question that I thought might uh, we might be able to entertain or the concept. And I don't know if this is the right um, time to do that, but it was Heather who mentioned she's at a company of 2,600 employees. Everything's yeah. hiring frozen nationwide. How do you keep them more managing angry managers? Because I don't know the role <laughs> purely of a recruiter. Like I'm, man, I'm imagining like me as a person, I'm just like, I'd send those people on their way <laughs> in the pipeline. Yeah. You, know? you don't know when the pipe, when it's going to open back up again. So yeah. What do you do there? Yeah. Kelly? What, what would you recommend? Uh, as much as this environment is different, I do fall back to not only 9-11 uh, when everything stopped, when I was living in New York, uh, in New York City, but I also refer back to the recession. My actual first corporate recruiting job at Robert Half was November of 2008, which was two months after Lehman crashed. So the whole world was throwing up on itself. Everybody was getting fired. So my experience in dealing with that kind of anger and helplessness, where there was nothing we could do, I mean, I had people calling me that would ask me to help them get a temp job and talk about not being able to pay their kids tuition. So being on the end of that call, you know, and that could come from a hiring manager too. I remember back in those days when layoffs happened, you had directors of design teams or people that used to have huge, you know, massive support of a team. And now they're doing the job of six people and they're, they're drowning and they just don't know what to do or where to put it. So it's a very difficult thing to do. You know, it's hard when you don't have a Band-Aid or a quick fix. I think the only solutions or the way to mend it is to kind of ask what solutions would help and try to find some of them. And we're all busy and it's difficult and maybe it would repeat. Uh, but for folks, maybe it's uh, suggesting other groups that you found. The way that we have this group for recruiting and hiring managers as well, maybe you can suggest other groups, which you will find on our shared doc, by the way, like the organization of designers, like the freelancers union. We've included lists like this on that, which I think will be, which will help to share with these folks because there are things that we see on LinkedIn or, or someone emails us and we read it, we like it, and we move on, but gathering them in one place. So for example, uh, to take the heat off you, because it's not personal, 
the, the it was sent in our group, but I put it on the share doc uh, as well, but it's a link to layoffs tracker. So as much as uh, hiring managers are angry and they're, they're coming to you and they're frustrated, you can say, I'm frustrated too. Take a look here at all the other companies. Look at all, this is what everybody else is doing. So it kind of takes it out of the personal space and says, we're kind of all in this together and it's happening. The layoff tracker, which I think came from that company drafted, also has a tab for available talent. So you can send your talent there to add their name, and you can also see the list of which companies are hiring and which ones aren't. Um, it's a very personal thing. It's like interviewing for a job. It feels personal to the candidates, what you just said about the feedback, Jill. It feels mm -hmm. personal to someone who's worked so hard and they just want that job, and they have no control if they get it. And on the company side, it's more transactional. So a CFO is just marking a sheet of how do we stay afloat? We have to fire these people. I don't agree with it. It is what it is. What are we going to do? Yeah. The only thing I can share or that I would share or that I did uh, are these tools that will help other people. And that's how I survived personally being a recruiter in the recession. I spent 20 minutes on the phone with a candidate, even though my manager yelled at me, because I wanted to help them find a solution. And I said, okay, if you can't do... Uh, if, you, if you can't get a job doing the entire bucket, why don't you just go for freelance as an information architect? Or if you can't find graphic design, look for jobs as a production artist because you can actually do that. And, you know, those are the little things that I think can help people, whether they're internal or whether it's, can uh, whether it's candidates. It's just kind of, I don't know, you can't fix it. So you just have to like offer things to, to help them move forward. Sorry. I feel like I'm not answering it because there isn't an answer. And I realized yeah. I just talked a little too much on it. <laughs> no, I, th I think you did a great job. I, I think, you know, again, having that list and I don't know, again, the rules, if you're uh, an internal recruiter for a company of what you can do or can't do um, and how you can help or how you can't help. And if you're breaking rules by, by the shared doc, you yeah. know, kind of a thing, um, you know, keeping candidates. You're not breaking more, rules. Yeah. No, you're not breaking rules. The, the typical contract for recruiters is basically, uh, you know, don't steal our talent, if you just think about it that way. You know, you're not, uh, you're not uh, soliciting talent is the word. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. Um, yeah. So I don't know, because um, we're at 1122. Um, yeah. We have another question. How about coming from the recruiter oh. side? How do you manage your time when you're not actively hiring? Interesting. That's a great question. Uh, a lot of people, and you know, this goes for, I think, a hiring manager as well, Jill. I think you can speak to this too. It may be that a whole design sprint or a product is on hold. Now what do you do? Mm -hmm. And I think both Jill and I come from a place of education. Even though I didn't become a teacher, I have a degree in it. So that's how I think about it. You can, uh, of course, you can build your pipeline, but that's difficult. You can't call people and say, you know, you don't want to, or email them and say, I don't have a job for you, but I want to add you to my list. Right. You can ask people how they're doing. If you, if you go through the layoffs list, you can find people or go through companies that had layoffs, other talent acquisition folks, and say, do you have people that got laid off? Send them my way. I have a role. Or it could be the opposite. We just had a, a freeze, and I have all these candidates in my pipeline. What do you have? And I think this is a place for everyone to work together. We always have docs we can clean up. Everyone has an old matrix or a like a sheet of available candidates that's probably like a pipeline mess. You could always go through things like that, cleaning out inboxes. If you're using an ATS like a greenhouse, now's a great time to get rid of that clutter. And I think you could really think about these, these questions that we're answering for you all. These are questions that if you have this downtime and, and you're, you're not actively hiring, these are things that you could put together to give away to your candidates, to share on your LinkedIn, to share through social media, to, like, to help everybody get through it. What do you think, Jill? Yeah, I think, you know, my reaction to that are the, um, again, because I focus more on the UX design side of things. So um, I host UX events uh, when I'm not actively like looking for someone. Um, and it's usually about around emerging designers. And um, selfishly, I get to keep my eye on who I might want to work with. Um, mm -hmm. But also I help them grow their community at the same time. And so it grows yeah. my network, it grows their network. And so when I'm not actively busy doing either much I'm always busy but um, you know I think it's uh, you know that's I spend my time kind of focusing on events even such as this to help build that community and resources for people um, and then again I'm keeping my eye out for for that star talent that I'd want to hire myself a hundred percent and Jill and I have both been posting lately of 
uh, you know, opening it up. If anyone, like personally, if anyone wants a free strategy session with me, I've made that offer on LinkedIn. We can all offer that to candidates. Jill does portfolio reviews. There's a couple of links in the doc you'll see. Uh, Jill is uh, doing a free course on UX design fundamentals, partnered with Adobe. Um, there's a link in there too if you want to refer folks and they need a free strategy session with me. I think there are a lot of things we can do to help other folks and put that out there. The diversity point is 100% a great point. Mm -hmm. I think now is a good time because it's beyond just a Boolean search and looking for resumes and folks. When you have to dig deep into diversity, it takes more and you have to get really narrow and deep to find those people. There are some really great links on the doc that we're sharing because Jill and I both believe in diversity, uh, like organizations of Power to Fly, Girls in Tech, Backstage Capital has an entire job board uh, and their portfolio of companies is outstanding. There is an internship link through Pledge LA where they are going to give these interns uh, a chance to learn VC, and they are selecting interns that come from underrepresented communities. I mean, there are some really outstanding places that you can go reach and find diversity candidates, whether you're going to place them now or whether you're going to be a mentor to them for their future in the coming years. So I, I encourage all of you to look for that. Um, I was on a call yesterday, actually, with um, General Assembly, and they were talking about how um, it's kind of a digression here, but maybe relevant, um, mm -hmm. how they are working with the mayor of Louisville, Kentucky. I'm from Kentucky, so, um, you know, it was interesting <laughs> to, to reskill people for free that were in the hospitality yeah. industry and things like that. Um, and so I think there are going to be more and more resources like that as well. So again, kind yeah. of that first aid to people that have either lost their job or are getting hired, you know, is this an opportunity for reskill? And, um, re, you know, maybe they've always been thinking about reskilling. And so I think yeah. it'll be interesting to see how that will also open up right now. And if that's a recommendation, mm -hmm as you're working with your candidates, you know, maybe they, they, they've, they've stuck in this job because it's what they do and it's what they know and they, you know, um, but what they really love is X. So maybe this other thing um, is a good opportunity for them as well. Yeah, so many free resources, we couldn't even fit them in a whole doc. No. I got an email this morning from LinkedIn with a slew of courses for, on LinkedIn Learning that they're now giving for free for small businesses. I mean, it's everywhere. So as you find it, make a sticky note drop a few links and every couple of weeks you got a list and you can send it out to a distro of folks you want to help or share it on your LinkedIn. Um, let's see, it's 11.28. We have about two minutes. Should uh, we share the, the document and just kind of highlight yeah. some of the things? I think one of the things I selfishly yeah. wanted to highlight um, was that there is a job board on that Adobe has created. Let me, I'm going to make sure I say this correctly. Um, Go for it, Jill. Uh, let me open my doc here. So there is um, Adobe Talent, free job postings for 60 days. In an effort to help spread awareness of open roles, Adobe Talent will be free to all companies and recruiters through May 31st. They might extend that. Um, and there's a link in the document uh, around that and how to access that. Because I think, again, you know, how can we help these people that are being rejected right now? And uh, you know, we were thinking about this in a meta level, Kelly, like our recruiters being affected by this and, you know, yeah. what, what kind of roles, do, you know, maybe there's no more hiring or, or, or whatever for them. And then they need to also find resources. So that was one yeah. I was particularly um, happy to share. Yeah. J so Jill the link Jill is mentioning is in the free resource section, which is further at the, at the bottom. Uh, mm -hmm. Sean, if you want to just show that for a sec, and then we can go to the top and we'll just do a brief overview of each section. Okay, so just just, Start well, to could, the bottom while we're here. Why not? <laughs> just so everybody knows, we'll be sending out the, the link to your document uh, after the the, the uh, session. Just so everybody knows, we'll get yeah. we'll get it to you. This will be a share for everybody. Uh, so free resources, the job postings. Uh, Jill met, uh Jill just mentioned uh, the UX Design Fundamentals webinar that Jill is hosting on April 25th that we mentioned, uh, as well as if anybody uh, knows someone that needs a uh, career strategy session. I work with. Recruiters, I work with engineers, I work with everyone across technology. I'm happy to help. Allura Collective is a company that Jill and I are working on together. We are a team of career relocation and remote work coaches, and that website will launch soon, and we would love to invite you all to follow along. So we can start from the top of the doc, uh, deck, Sean. Uh, sorry, not the deck, the doc, and just run through what we've given you all. Uh, there's our LinkedIn um, pages if you want to connect and follow. Obviously, we're happy to help for here. 
Uh, first section of resources are jobs and companies that are hiring during the pandemic. So you have specific companies, whether it's Slack or Zoom or Automatic, which is a fully remote company, by the way, all distributed team jobs, uh, and then some other lists that were put together uh, that are more specific. Internships. ServiceNow and CloudFare have both recently been promoting their internships and the fact that they're growing the programs and still looking for people. And the Pledge LA is the VC one that got me so excited because I have not heard of an internship like that before. And I think it is a brilliant addition to what we need to kind of build up the climate for diversity. Uh, Jill, you want to talk about curated job boards? Um, this was something that we had pulled together as well. Um, I think Girls in Tech Job Board. I, I think, is it? Is this the built in LA? Uh, yeah, com? so yeah. I did the general one for built in because mm -hmm. they have a site for LA, Austin, New York, Seattle, Miami. There's a bunch of them. So I gave the general one so everyone could kind of find what works for them. Got it. Um, let me yeah. look again here. Uh, so general, I think the ones that I, I can't remember now which ones I threw in. I think it, well, it was the freelancers union, union the Designers Guild, uh, Working Not Working, um, those pieces, those were the ones that right. I had um, that kind of in the other groups that I'd added yeah. in. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so on the job boards, you've got uh, female specific, you've got like women who code, who's not just a job board, but they also offer free courses and content. Remote is fully remote list. You have the layoff list, uh, which is that tracker we talked about that was shared in our group. Create and Cultivate is a job that focused on on-site events, and they've now pivoted to digital, but they have some really great opportunities for remote uh, work, LA and New York. The other groups below, like Jill mentioned, you have the Designers Guild, you have the Freelancers Union. Uh, there's a link in there to the Freelancers Union um, blog about what the CARES Act means for any freelancers, and that could be someone looking for work, a sole proprietor. The definition of freelancer is very loose right now, given mm -hmm. what's going on. Uh, and below that is an LA-specific one. Uh, I'd like to point out the one at the bottom of this other group section is a link shared by Christina Tierney, who's the founder of HireWise. I found this on LinkedIn. She shared a list of 65 open roles across the country for recruitment in HR. Oftentimes we think of candidates that don't have jobs that are outside of recruitment, but recruiters need jobs too. So exactly. we included that one. And yeah. I think that wraps us for the, for the doc. Did I miss anything, Joe? I don't think so. Um, yeah, awesome. and again, just the invitation, uh, you know, if this is a helpful list, if you want to continue to add to this and share it out, because you can have it in one space, you know, you can make a copy and edit it however you want to do it. But hopefully this is something that, you know, the people that are on the call today really um, yeah. are helpful and, you know, have, we've added to their resource list a bit. Looks like our last couple of comments are thank yous. And uh, that makes us so very happy that you guys enjoyed this. Sean, thank you so much, not only for starting the group of LA recruiters, but as now US recruiters. Thank you for running the member directory and including all of this in it, recruiting.work. We're really excited to be able to partner with you. And we're really excited to be able to do more of these things with you as well. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my answer to that question of what do we do with our downtime? So <laughs> well, back to work. Yeah. Exactly. So. And you know, I hope to stay in touch with all of you and, you know, hopefully uh, we can continue to be resources for each other. Excellent. Yeah. And maybe we should do one on changing the background. I kind of want to figure out how to be a potato. Did you see that one? I did. It turned this woman into a potato. I did. <laughs> Sorry. I did. End of webinar sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, thanks everybody. I think everybody has all the contact information. Again, we'll be sending out the link to the documents. Uh, what I was showing was just a PDF, but know that it's, it's a Google Doc, so it will be editable. Uh, and Kelly and Jill can help you with anything uh, going forward on that. Yep. So again, thanks again for everybody. Stay healthy and we'll get through this pretty quick, I hope. So knock on wood, here we go. Thanks, Sean. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.